and blessings to everyone peace and we blessings, are peace just a little blessings. tad bit a couple of minutes too late but that's okay what's up brother how you doing uh brother 504 and, and sister Purple? what's up brother what's going on brother we're waiting to alex plummer come to the uh to the panel yeah, he need to come to the front of the i think he's just in uh he's gonna be a little late coming on <laughs> You need to come to the front of the congregation. Is that sister um, purple? Is that sister purple in the house? Okay, but take look up before we get right, started. Right. Bro, we got a, we got a big topic today. We got a big big topic today. All right, before we get started, man, we got a ground rule. There ain't gonna be no over talking. Everybody, Let's speak. everybody will get a. Everybody gonna get a fair share of time to talk. Ain't gonna be no over talking there, but so everybody gonna have a uh, a chance to be able to express their opinion and be able to speak and without being interrupted. And if they if you feel like they're being interrupted, bro, you that's why I got mics. the mute, brother, bro. Mute their mics. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. We mute the mic. We ain't gonna be we're talking over each other. We're gonna be very organized today, and that's what uh I want to I want to be able to today hear everybody out out today. You know what I'm saying? So um, we're, still, we're waiting on Brother Allen, uh, Allen uh, Smith, and we also have uh, we also have uh, Cedric, Cedric Cedric Warren coming in the house today. So we're gonna have a real, real, uh, a real Whoa. discussion. And I, I'm, I'm gonna throw y'all for this. Uh, gonna be a hot know, topic. On, on some things that I'm bringing out today. It's gonna be really nice. Peace and blessings well, to everyone in the chat. For those who are in the bushes, peace and je uh, peace and uh, blessings to you. If you're in the bushes, you can come on out, say hello to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because we're gonna we're gonna talk that conscious community thing today, and uh, we're gonna bring it out real. Um, my theme today, uh, we're questioning the ice cream man song, and uh, that's and some of this information that I have gotten is kind of new. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, you know, it's kind of new. I, th these are things that I didn't even realize. I'm, you know, uh, you know, uh, how, how you doing, sister? Uh, hey, we got the sister in the house. That's Alan's wife. Okay, Simone. We got Simone. How you doing? Happy Sunday. Uh, so, and uh, we're waiting on your husband, Alec, uh, Alan Smith, to come on to the panel. And we're going to have a breakdown today. Uh, we, got, we got one female on the panel. Uh, that's Sister Purple. And we have... We're gonna have a bunch of men on on this panel. It's gonna be really, really interesting today. Yeah, let's get this party rolling. Let's get this party rolling. Now wait. <laughs> well, we ain't gonna sit there and wait on. I'm gonna play this song so because I ain't got time to sit there and wait on everybody to show up. 
But this is what I'm talking about. This is uh, the song that I'm coming at, uh, uh, something that's been very disturbing, um, you know, basically all the way around. So we're going we to talk Go about ahead. All right, we got Cedric Warren in the house. Okay, that's good. I already let my brother know. We got brother Cedric in the house. Hey, hey, can y'all hear me? The one second. My man. What's going on, baby? This my man. Trying to make adjustments right quick. Can you hear? Okay, we got Alan in the house. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let's see if we get this panel rolling. Okay, well, do we have yeah. Cedric in the house? Let's see if we can get. Ah, hold up. That's me. Okay, we got we got Cedric in the house. All right, we got a little power team in the house. Okay, hold on one second. Let me let me get this guy up the, the that I'm telling you guys about. Can y'all um, hear me? Hey, yes. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna get really hear, deep say. into history today. We're gonna talk about yeah, what yeah, got yeah, us to here. Yeah, yeah, what got us here today? Yeah, we can hear you, uh, brother Allen. We can hear you. And uh, the rules, the ground rules today. We will not talk over each other. I will, I will mute the mic to give everybody an opportunity to talk. I will mute the mic to give everybody a chance to, uh, to talk. Okay, so this, so, to, so yeah. today is it is what it is. You know, so, so we got we got a lot to talk about. Um, a spirit is in the house. Okay, so let me see. Let me get uh, this dog. Mic check one two. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Hi, Goodell. Okay, uh, give me one second. I'm gonna play this just to let you guys get a feel on what I was, uh, what the, what this is all about. Hit the DJ with a spill. By the way, uh, we're gonna start with um, Brother Cedric. Could you introduce yourself to the panel? Matter, uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna go with uh, Alan. Uh, no, we're gonna go with Brother Cedric. You know, Introduce uh, yourself to the panel and 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 uh, who are you and what you do. Um, fly traders in the house. Tell everybody about who you are, brother. And I'm gonna mute these mics right quick. Hi, right, good deal. I hope you guys can try to pick up my audio interface right quick. But uh, I'm Cedric Warren, uh, currently residing in uh, Washington D.C. region. Uh, been on Everett for a while, so I appreciate you inviting me on, man. Thank you. Um, you always encouraging me, and you always. Uh, positive. Um, my background is finance. Uh, I, I have a company called Fly Traders and we teach people how to trade in the stock market. So um, it's an independent company. It's not mixed with, you know, network marketing and some other stuff that people are doing, not to knock them, but that's just not my flow and my style. And uh, also I have uh, We Cooling DJs. I have a network of DJs here in the area and actually around the country uh, that we do events, we network with and we share information. And also, um, I have a sauce called Dabba Do. They call it the DJ sauce on the street. So um, basically, that's it, man. My background is uh, I'm a history, history uh, background, political science. Uh, but I don't use that to qualify any of my statements or anything that I make. So that's pretty much it about me. Uh, just came back from with the kids dirt bike. And so kind of had to scramble. If y'all see a little dirt in my face, that's what's going on. So that's pretty much it. I appreciate it, man. I don't know. I think I'm well, yeah, brother, brother, brother Allen, brother Allen, you give a little background on yourself too, brother. Brother Allen, can you hear me? Hold on. Oh, okay. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, brother. All right, there you go. All right. Uh, first of all. Uh, how y'all doing? How's everybody doing on the panel? Good, 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 good morning. All right. Uh, I'm I'm Alan Smith. Me and uh Everett, we grew up. He grew up under me, you know, in Pontchartrain Train Park in New Orleans. You know, we we've been friends. We 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 more like family. Like that's like my little brother. You know. So, and we uh, you know, I'm a truck driver. I work for uh. It'll be nice if y'all call me Peanut Noodle, my brother. Peanut, Peanut guess what? My bad. Me and Peanut. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> me, me and Pete. Like, that, that, that's all I. I ain't gonna lie. That's all I heard his mama and his sister and all them say peanut. So he right, he right. 
But, you know, so we we grew up. That was my little brother. You know what I'm saying? I seen him. I seen him really evolve into a, to, to a grown man now, you know, doing his thing. So, uh, you know, basically I drive. I, I, I drive my truck driver, you know, and um, basically I'm, I'm on here because I, I like the information. I like to learn. You know, I give I give a little bit what I do know and I soak up all the stuff that all the positive information uh, that you guys uh, give. And, and Cedric, I, I need to get with you after this, too. <laughs> I need to get with you after this because I want to learn more about that as well. So that's basic. That's basically it with me. You know, I'm, I'm just ready. I'm, I'm eager to hear what's going on today. DJ uh DJ Peanut, you ready? Okay, we can go on uh uh the next uh person up is Sister Purple. Yeah. Sister Purple, can you Sister can Purple, you, hear? you are next. Uh we lost her. Okay. I don't know well, where she went with her. Uh, can we go uh, with yourself? Uh, you you'll be up next, five or four, brother. Oh well, everybody know me. I'm the one. Everybody know me. I come in every week, co-host with Mr. Peanut on Mr. Peanut on the panel. I've been blessed to be able to get a chance to learn some new knowledge. I've been knowing C Cedric from the Facebook, brother, brother <laughs> Allen. Oh, appreciate that conversation we had the other day, brother Allen. Oh, you got that, bro. We both of you. You talk. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Kind of okay, we got uh, sister, uh, sister. Okay, you you finish up, and then Sister Purple is next. Go ahead. No, nah, she could go. No, nah, I let I let Sister Purple come on and and and, and oh, and everybody on the on the channel, man, like and subscribe to the channel, and like press that like button, share the video. It's gonna be an interesting show today, man. So everybody like and share the video once it's over with today. Okay, Sister uh, Purple, Sister Purple in the house. We got okay, go ahead. Oh. You talking? To me? Hello. We can't hear you. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, what was the question? Because it was breaking bad for a minute there. No, actually, he was just letting everybody give a little background on himself and everything, so the audience can know who you are and and your background on your on your life and stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um. Hi, I'm Purple. Um. My background is that I'm a black native. I'm from three different tribes. I'm Chickahominy. Pomotian. Can you speak up? We can't hear you. Could you speak up? Or just a little louder. Could you speak up? I got it. I'll still go. I don't know why it's not working. We can hear you. We just want to start you to speak up just a little louder. You can. We can hear you. Great. Can you hear me better? Okay. Yes. I was go ahead. Saying that yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I was saying I'm from three tribes, Mattapani, Pamunkey, and Chickahominy. Um, I was born and raised in Hampton, Virginia. Um, went to Hampton University private, private school that they have for young kids. Um, I'm a mother and an entrepreneur. I'm working on getting some businesses started. And I've always had a love of history. I'm a history buff and major in poli sci as well, but I did not graduate. So that's me. I don't know if they heard me. Okay, for those who know me, okay, I'm Peanut Nola 504. Okay, and uh, I'm born and raised from New Orleans, Louisiana. I now reside in the state of Mississippi. Uh, after Katrina, you know, uh, a lot of us have been scattered all across the nation. You know, it is what it is. But um, yes, I'm a truck driver. I am a husband to a beautiful wife who's cooking me some gumbo right now. And uh, also, I have four children. I have four beautiful sons. And 
it is what it is. You know, uh, we come from the great uh, state of Louisiana and, um, you know, Chata Nation and Cherokee Nation, you know, we have a little bit of both in our background. So we, we go, we're going to sit here and today I want, I'm going to play this. I want everybody to mute their mic. I want you guys, before we get, I want your opinion on this song. But I, I'm going. I want everybody to mute their mic and listen, and then we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. And and throughout history, this is what we've been going through. So I want everybody to mute their mic. All right. release your mics uh right now and i want i want i want to uh understand this uh, right now um the song is called nigga loves a watermelon ha 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 okay i want i want you guys to seek that in all the years when i was growing up in new orleans louisiana we ran behind the ice cream man okay and i want you to understand we ran behind the hot ice cream man and um I was a kid. We didn't know no better. Okay. And this information is new to me. Now you might have heard of this song a year ago or two, or whatever, but this information is new to me. Now we have all let our kids run to the ice cream truck. And that, and these are the things I want you guys to understand that, that so-called African Americans that are Aborigine to this land have been bamboozled have been made fun of, blackface have been going on. They look at us like clowns. They look at us like clowns. So the, the, the things that I want you guys to understand, we are educating each other. And as we sit as grown adults, I'm 45 years old right now, and I have never heard of this song by this man. And I want you guys to, to understand that we we gotta we gotta teach our kids even if we we got a boycott buying ice cream from the ice cream truck. Now that we are educated enough to see that they were making fun of black people, and and the funniest thing, the saddest thing, before I let you guys speak, is that I know a lot of white people, and there are more white people that eat damn freaking watermelon. They eat more watermelon than we do. So they they make they make mockeries out of us. They eat more chicken than us, but they say we the chicken and the watermelon eaters. And it's funny, and I know I know people who don't even eat these two, uh, uh, two uh, you know, a uh, uh, chicken and, and watermelon. Not all black people eat chicken and watermelon. I do. I like it, but they act like we are aliens. So I, I really wanna, I wanna know your opinion today. This is a tough topic. And that's why I, I, I when I put in the description, I made sure that I put in the description that it's not appropriate for kids. Because right now they will strike me. They will strike me if I would do that because it's about race. So for us to be educated, we have to talk about this. Okay, so I want, I want I want to know your opinions. I'm going to start with um, the 504 brother, and I'm, and I'm going to go all the way down in that direction. And I want to hear an educated conversation about his song. And we're going to move on to other things also that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Tom and Jerry. We're going to talk about a lot of things that have been offending to us black people. We don't we we have been very 
obliged by this. We have not even realized this was going on. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute up and I'm gonna go with five oh four, brother. Well, I lay, I was on Facebook one day, and there was a guy. He heard the ice cream truck come through the neighborhood, and he actually ran out there and banned the ice cream man from coming to the neighborhood because he was playing that exact same song. And that's when I found out that day the song was racist. The dude said, we have to educate ourselves, man. Stop letting your children run to the ice cream truck because they think, oh, it's the ice cream man coming. Not saying. He said, if you can't come through here and play a different song, don't come through here at all. And I was like, wait a minute. Let me, let me say. So I went and did my research on that, on that same song. I was like, wait a minute. All this time I've been running to the ice cream truck when I was a little child up until uh, I became a teen and then the whole, never knew the song was racist until I got to be an adult and I heard the guy on Facebook, actually though, he went live and banned, I actually saw him ban the ice cream man from the neighborhood. And that's when I got, I was like, okay, now I understand what's going on. It's a coincidence that you played that is, that that song today. I've like, been wanting to talk about that song, how people today still play that song in, in Texas, there are ice cream, African ice cream men come in the neighborhood playing that exact song. He don't have the words to it, but they got the instrumental playing. And people don't know about the instrument, don't know about it, so they got the instrumental play thinking it's all good. And people don't know that the instrumental is the same thing as the song that he has been, and they still play it every day. Every day the ice cream man come through here and play that song, man. Uh, how do that make you feel as a so-called African American? A so-called because we do on, know that on, we are we not, in the end. Like oh yeah, I'm about to say, come on. How man. do they, How do that oh, make no, you was, feel? Oh no, I was hot because for a simple reason. I, the reason why I was mad, I'm not gonna lie. The reason why I was angry, bro, was because I was. As a child running to the ice cream truck thinking it was all nice. Oh, the ice cream man, ice cream man coming. But not knowing, I had waited till I became an adult to understand. If I would have never seen that video of the dude getting on the ice cream man about that song, I would have never knew the song was racing. You see what I'm saying? So it took for me to see that video on the ice cream. My daughter, I don't let my daughter go to the ice cream, ice cream truck now. I don't let her go to the ice cream truck, bro. Because if I hear him playing, we're gonna move just... over to Cedric, my brother. We're gonna move over to Cedric. I don't mean to cut you off, but no, we want to make this I... fast. We're gonna move over to Cedric. Can y'all can you hear me for one? Wait on, brother Cedric. Okay, cool. Um, it's one of the things, man. You know, it's like you know we have information that's that's uh, available to us now, so we know better. Uh, a lot of times, and I saw the video you referenced to the guy was a foreigner. I don't think he even knew. Uh, that's just was the song that played. So until he was educated, you know, he kind of proceeded a little differently. But I'm, I'm just going to say this, man. You know, the best place to keep a secret is uh, right in front of right in front of you and open in open space. Right. So we have this republic. We have ignorance. We have um, just the, the, the you, the the simple mindedness of it all right so these people know come to find out watermelon is one of the best things that you can you can uh you can eat to hydrate yourself like this was a original food that aboriginal people ate to stay hydrated and the natural sugars sugar cane was another so you know the the information is right in front of us how we should be eating and how we should be proceeding and, and taking a look at even though hey Okay, you make it fun of us, it shows your ignorance. But for a thousand years that this some level of, of uh power, they have done nothing but take taken from the earth. They have Cedric, you're gonna have to come <coughs> come in and come back out. I think we can't hear you. He's gonna uh we're gonna we're gonna mute his mic. And we're gonna come back to Cedric, and we're gonna go to uh, Alex. Alex, we're gonna go to Alex Smith. Go ahead. Who you going to? Wait, Alex. Alex Smith. Um, oh no, I'm, I'm right now. Right now, I'm just. I'm right now. I'm just listening yes, because uh, I'm like. I'm like you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I mean, Peanut. 
Yes, we can Hello. hear you fine. All right, all right. Basically, I, I, can, just, I can hear you fine. Okay. Uh, basically, I'm just uh, listening to you guys right now because this is uh, this was news. I saw it. I saw this uh, deal the other day about uh, about this song. I also saw about uh, they had like twelve nursery rhymes that used to wear darkies or niggers in it. You know, so uh, uh, right now I'm still I'm gonna listen to you guys. Okay, look, I'm gonna um, mute your mic. Bring it up. I'm gonna go. I gotta mute your mic. Uh, let's go. We're gonna go with purple. We're gonna have to go to. Uh, we're gonna go with purple because what's going on? He's breaking up. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Oh. Okay. Basically, here's the thing. The reason why they chose to turn that song into what it became is because your number one cash crop at the time was the watermelon. And it was extremely vital to your community. It was something that was a cash cow crop for you. So of course, anything that has ever given the original people power, they degradate and make shameful because they don't want you to benefit from it. So this is all about money and power. Anytime you are able to get money, power, or land, they're going to degradate whatever it was that allowed you to have it. Thus, you have all these $5 Indians. Thus, you have the, our sciences being disrespected and called evil, dark, hidden, which is why the word black itself is seen as evil and dark and malicious so this is not anything new this is something that has worked for them it's, it's been tried and true and they're continuing on with it the sad part is most most of the original people here was not aware of what that song actually was and that's sad because we're being degraded in our faces and we're not even realizing it because it's been so indoctrinated into the system because, again, you're dealing with a systemic thing, which is racism. It's a system. So this is just one of the many things that's a part of that system. We can go back to Cedric. Let Cedric pick up where he left off at, huh? Can y'all can y'all guys hear me? My, my bad. Somebody called me uh and it, it booted me off or something. Oh, I can hear you now, brother. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and as the as the young lady uh just explained, you know, you the European powers have taken things and things that they don't understand, they make fun of it, right? They they try to make it, they demonize it, right? If they can't understand it, they shoot it first, or they try to downgrade it. Or what have you so my, i guess the point i was making earlier is you know the watermelon was vital to a lot of aboriginal the the, the culture it was it was a, like she said it was a money it was a money crop uh this was something that we ate it's one of the best things that can hydrate you uh scientifically the natural sugars and just the water inside of the inside of the melon so these are tactics that 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 are used against our community you know to uh to make fun of you know the things that we find important they made fun of the uh the people uh the aboriginal people that wear skulls uh on their on their chests and that the big ear ranks not knowing that's that they, they called it evil or some type of voodoo or you know i mean it, it they just demonize it but not knowing that this guy is the doctor in the village and that skull that was being displayed or what have you was a diagram of the brain to let them know what's the pressure points to heal people if they got injured, right? So because they don't understand it, they try to label it and try to try to make it something that it, it wasn't because they don't understand it. And our, our people are very advanced advanced society. We didn't, we, we as, a, as a people, didn't get to this point of, of surviving the earth's uh, nature by just being by, by ignorance. You know, our science holds up with the best of them. 
and you know, and, and what we have now is a, a, a westernized society that has basically rebranded uh, things that we we already have, or we already discovered. You know, but the best place to keep a secret is is right in front of you, and we should look at that and uh, and examine that a little bit. Why are they making fun of it? Why are they trying to downgrade and say things? And you know what, the slaves did the same thing. To, 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 uh, as a form of communication, the song Jimmy Crack Corn and I Don't Care, making fun of the slave master, you know. So these these are things in society that that people do, you know. But we've we've been on the the lesser end of of, of the, you know you, you put it like this. Now that we know better, we should do better. Not knowing that that particular song has racial connotation in this western in this in this republic. And you know what I learned, and it's crazy because they used, they used to have back then they had the thing they were called with the word picnic. The word picnic was called pick a nigga. They used to call it pick a nigga. And then they had the alligator baby where you could take black babies and feed them to the alligator, alligator baby. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't a lot of people don't even know that. That how they how they used to do it to us, they used to make us dress up and be their entertainment. They'll throw a big old party and make us dress up with red lips and stuff and with the white gloves. And people and people don't even know today the reason why on Chameleon Sunday they have the ushers, they have to wear the white gloves and stuff. You know why they want to, they have the ushers wear the white gloves in church? Because the white people didn't the, the white people didn't want to touch the money after the black people done collected it around the church. That's the reason why they wear white gloves every Sunday in the church house. Yeah, that's the a ushers are out there. A lot of nuances to the history. Ah, that's some interesting. Uh, that's an interesting take. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, pro it's a proven fact that when the ushers have the back then, the reason why they had made the black all black people wear gloves in the church, and we need to make them go and collect the money around in the church because the white folks didn't want to touch the money after the after the so called niggas didn't touch the money. Yeah, it's it's it was a trip. They used to take our babies, like like when the, 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 back then the black people used to have the babies, and they didn't want to. They, they used to call it back when it was, they used to call it buck breaking. They used to put fear in the in the sister, in the in the black person. So what they used to do is take her baby, make her watch them feed her baby to the alligator, put fear in her, and rape the black man in front of sister to break the to break the black man to break his spirit. They used to call it buck breaking. Why I say? White people was raping our men and women. It wasn't just just the women; they were raping the men too. So it went both ways. But a lot of people don't know about that because, like, like said, like Cedric said, it's in plain sight. But as they always say, if you want to hide something from someone, put it in the book, because they ain't gonna pick that book up and read it. They're not gonna pick that book. But I'm gonna pass the mic to every that every speak. I mean, Peanut. I'm sorry, let Peanut speak now. One of the things that I, I tell people all the time, I say you 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 have to understand. Now, I, the the gloves things when when it come down when you had segreg segregated churches, I was the reason why I was uh, very shocked that you said that because being segregated and um, you know white people not being in the nigger church, you know as they quote say, how could they be you know using? Why would they need gloves? So that was something that was interesting that you tell me. I'm not, I'm not debunking what you're saying, but I, I kind of found I was, that was. Uh, yeah, I was reading you know, about strange. it. I was reading yeah. about it. About a, I was reading about it. A, I was reading about that about a, about a, a couple of years ago. I was reading about that how they was. Uh, man, it's, it's a lot of stuff how they did to treat treat them. Do you remember they used to have? You know, do you remember back then, man? You, you know, coming up, they had a lot of white pastors, and then they started later down the line, the black folks started coming around. You know, the. And they, I was reading where they used to have where they had uh, the people the, the people uh, used to have the black folks. I'm not getting a chance. I'm gonna send to your phone the little information and stuff to your to your uh, to your phone where you can read it for yourself. Where they used to make the, uh, the the black people wear the gloves and collect the money and give it to them because the white folks didn't want to touch the money. It was crazy. I was like, wait a minute. I was shocked and mad at the same time. I, that was one of the things where I was shocked and mad at the same time. But I wasn't too shocked because after I learned about them feeding the babies to the alligators, I was through right there. I, I didn't put nothing past them no more. And after I read about what they did to the indigenous people too, and that I read about what they did to the indigenous people too. When I think about when I think about what they talk about dogs, how they use dogs against us, and how they 
use dogs to um to bite us and even to this day they use the dogs against us um that that's that's treating us like we're animals and and i and i have always stated in our history that you see that um these people didn't bring their best and i and i and when i tell you brother cedric and this is something uh that i was talking to you about is the fact that when you had the british that had came from when you talk about the queen of england and the queen of england didn't bring her best she had prisoners she brought she um pardoned prisoners so when she pardoned prisoners she didn't bring her best so christopher columbus brought people over here that were already criminals right. See, this was not these were different white people these these white people were not uh a good white people right. they brought people of malicious and they brought people down here and, and, and i tell people all the time i say you have to really understand how they treated us and i'm gonna let you get the mic and the brother said and, and I'm, because when you talk about when you hear donald trump the first thing he's saying they the mexicans are bringing their works so what did christopher columbus and his group do did they bring the worst or did they bring their best huh they brought their worst if you ask me yeah i mean that's i, I, I want to hear that from brother Cedric. i don't want to oversimplify things and, and explain it i mean european history 101 you know, those, those uh, you, Brit, Britain was some of the most racist people. Brother Cedric? Around. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Check one, two. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. I don't know what's going on, but I can hear you well. Yeah, so we go back to, uh, to European history 101. You know, what you had, you know, the Europeans, they believed 3%. They believed in not all Europeans should be able to breed with each other. And that's what they call, created the castle system, like the quarter castle, half castle, full castle, or what have you. And then you have the, the royalty and, you know, so they treated the Irish, the Irish was the Negroes. You see what I'm saying? The Irish was the marginalized people. You know, they treated them, they, they planted them into indentured servants. And now I'm hearing a lot of the, uh, the, the, uh, the right state that, you know, y'all not the only ones that, that is, that have, uh endure slavery my people endure slavery too and so you have like a, a a revisionist type of history going on right now because you know there's a great day of reckoning that's happening right now in the united states uh and everyone was right you know uh these people that that came over here these were people that were pardoned these were prisoners these were people that didn't they want in their country and what a way you know let's send them to the new land this dangerous territory and see how they make out you know and uh that's what we have new orleans new orleans was uh you know was one of those places where they sent the i guess the uh a lot of the prostitutes and the prostitute women you know um you know that's louisiana history in itself you can go back and kind of and I, I don't have references in front of me but you can go back and kind of uh google or, or look up uh, what i'm saying just by putting in like prostitutes coming from uh you know uh settlers or what have you to to the to you know from the dutch and, and places like that so you know, ever ever is right. You know, this place was settled on people with uh, hideous type of morals. Uh, this is one of the most filthiest uh, republics uh, in the world that treated slaves uh, worse than animals. Um, you know, this is known. These things are recorded and, and captured in history. You know, so it doesn't it don't surprise me when I hear these nuances in in history about the white gloves because that's what we learn from. They didn't trust us. Uh, gathering in churches, so they would have a overseer, which we usually is a white person, uh, in the service, and you hear these songs and these these spirituals, you know, they were tragic. They were tragic when you really listen to them. They was wishing death upon uh, their slave owners, they they masters per se, you know, and it's 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 it's, it's a tragic, it's a tragic thing that happened to us as humans. Just as human beings, you know, when you really start delving into the nuances of like the history, so I, I, that's all I want to say because I, I don't have all my reference reference material. And I don't like to just throw uh, facts, but you can go back and check and plug that in and and and, and take a look at um, the, the history and whatever it is saying uh, when it comes to some of the early settlers here.
Are you guys muted? Oh, yeah, I can hear you, brother. So go ahead. Go ahead. Peanut? I mean, I'm sorry. Peanut? Peanut? <laughs> Peanut Nola? Nah. Yeah, I don't know what happened. He must have a miscommunication over there or, or something going on over there, brother. I would actually like to hear from the uh, my, my, my other sister, who's the uh, history uh, political science background on, I guess, early early York Ellis and what uh, Everett was, was discussing about the prisoners and people that boarded the ship with Columbus and, and things like that. If you could jump in there and just kind of give you a perspective, I, I would love to hear it. Oh, to my sister Rain. Purple Rain. Oh. Yeah. What were you saying now? Because it's kind of breaking. I'm sorry. I was wondering what Sister Purple was, and I was sitting there thinking, I said, I said, we need the point of view from a female. I always got to get that point of view from a female. And what I try to tell people on this panel is that we the passion that you hear from our voice every time you talk about when we talk about these things. And some people say, you bringing up old wounds. You're bringing up stuff that happened since 1912. You're bringing up all these things that happened with my ancestors. We didn't do it, it was my ancestors. But to learn something so it won't repeat itself, right. we got to educate ourselves. See, you don't really sometimes you got to educate others. Sometimes Correct. if you want to be treated a certain way, you have to educate others. Because they don't, some of these new people, these young people don't even know nothing about this. White people don't even know about this. They have been lied, white people lied to white people. Yeah. So if they don't know, it's they up to us to educate. It ain't nothing racist about education. Well, what you're I'm talking my about right now is um, D'Angelo Brown, I think is her name, calls white fragility, which is if they admit that they're racist or whatever. Me then personally, all I'm doing is debunking right. what I learned in school, trying to but, get that out my out of my brain, no, what they oh, talk about. Hey, 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 hold on. I'm white. Old, I'm she was saying talking. I got to meet your mic. You got to let her finish her conversation. Um, but go ahead, is, uh, sister. Continue. I appreciate that. What is happening is that true, you didn't enslave anybody, but you're still reaping the benefits from it. There has been a system that has been put in place. So even if you don't think you're privileged, there are certain things that are inherently designed into the system where it sets you up in a better situation than it does. Someone speaking. The minority groups of people so therefore like the thing with the housing the redlining of districts the inability to to be presented the same opportunities because you're black and it's still being having an impact because you had a lot of black people who were not able to buy homes and we're talking about generational wealth and there's certain opportunities that can come just from the fact that you own a home. It impacts the- Excuse me, I was wanting to know if someone was speaking because I don't hear no way. So even though you may not think you're benefiting from the system- oh, uh, Hold up, sister, hold up, sister. Out of some, some kind of way, what is uh, 504 brother? Seth, Seth. He's talking and we gotta let her talk because uh, she she's getting a back, you know, like a feedback. You, I don't know if you can hear. Could you hear everybody? Uh, five or four, brother. No, I'm that's not, what he was saying. You can hear. That's what I'm saying. I can't hear no okay. nobody, no female. Cause we can hear you well. Yeah. We can hear you well, Breaking brother. <laughs> I couldn't hear the that. Loud, I, I'm, I'm, the, that's what I'm saying. I'm waiting yeah. on the sister. Okay, we can hear you well, and if you can hear me, we're gonna mute the mic so the sister can finish what she's saying, okay. and then we're gonna go back go to you. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead, sister. Oh, sorry about that. 
But even though they don't think they're benefiting, it's systemic, which means that it inherently favors them because you're dealing with over 400 years worth of free labor that has benefited Fortune 500 companies. Wall Street was founded on it. You have a lot of things that people take for granted that has been done to the original people of this land, the Black people of this land, just like with the medical things that were done to Black people. So even though they're not seeing it, it doesn't matter whether you, you see it or not. It's the fact that you're still benefiting. You're still having the privilege that was given to you because of all these things that are inherently indoctrinated into the system to make sure that you're, you're going to be okay. And what's really pissing them off is that in spite of all the things they did to gain the system towards themselves, Black people have still been able to progress and outshine them in spite of the fact that all these things were done to benefit them. That's correct. Because we didn't become lazy until we stopped working for free for them. They never saw you as lazy before when you were being whipped in in some of everything else that they did to us to make sure we knew our place. Right. So they can... The... The history speaks for itself, and they're talking about that we need to get over it, but nobody tells them to get over 9-11. Nobody tells them to get over the Holocaust. These things are still remembered, and rightly so, because until you acknowledge your history, until you remember it, you are doomed to repeat it, and that's the whole thing. They really want us to go back to the slavery times. So they don't want you to remember it because they're hoping they can make you repeat it. And then so, uh, brothers, uh, brother, brother five hundred four, brother. Now we're gonna go with five hundred four, brother, and uh, we're gonna go back to brother Cedric. No, brother Allen, because he ain't saying it now <laughs> in a while. So we're gonna go for brother five hundred four, brother, because that brother got a lot to say. No, I'm I'm sitting over here. I'm sorry. I apologize. I did not hear nothing nobody said. It's been quiet on my end. I didn't hear with no, with the sister saying anything, bro. It's been like it's somebody. It's like the whole page was mute, so I can't even respond to what was previous said. Can y'all hear me? No, I can hear whoever well, just said something just now. All right. Well, go ahead, Alan. Wait Go ahead. Come on, brother. So yeah, y'all can I, hear me, right? Yeah, go ahead. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I'll let you talk. I'm going to mute my mic. All right. All right. Basically, what I'm saying basically is we are um, we are educating people, right, on certain things that they might, have, might uh, haven't known. But my question is, what do we do to get everyone on a, a level playing field? You know, economically, educationally, uh, how do we get financial independence? And mentally be functional again. You know, like it's it's good to address things that, you know, all the bad things that has happened. But I think we brother as brothers and sisters have to come and come together and start thinking about resolutions and solutions to, you know, like when we get to the table, what do we demand? Like. You know, and it can't be cookie cutter and it can't just be basic. It has to be nah, specific. It has to be specific, I, you know. So what that's my question to the panel. Like what what are some things? All right, I know what we do, because one part part of part of me is we educate their children and we make you know our history a part of American history because without our history, there's no American history. So when you start, when you start doing this from grassroots, you know, we can't deal with like a 50 year old, 60 year old, you know, good old boy. He don't give a damn what we talking about. Who cares? Like for real, like (laughs) I don't care. So what, you know, like you said, I'm right. I'm reaping the benefits. So I don't care how you feel. So that's one thing we have to really understand. Like who cares? So now we have to reach to the, that's what I tell about, see our kids and children, 
excuse me, uh, like Brother Rainstone, no kids, our children, at the end of the day, they don't have the problems we have. They get along very well with their with their white friends, their Mexican friends, with their Asian friends. You know, these are things that are taught to children. You know, they don't come in. If you go to a playground in any playground in America and you leave adults out of it and you put all colors of children in there, they're going to play. They're going to have fun. They're not going to worry about, oh, he looked different or she looked different. You know, so what do we do? What I know, one of the things I do know is, is that we do have to start education. We have to reach these kids early and don't contaminate their minds with racism, you know, and, 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 and us, the people look like us, we have to support each other financially. Like, like if we, you know, we can talk all day, but if, 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 if the brother over here selling whatever, and we keep going to the big brand store to get it because his is two dollars more. But we're not taking into consideration. These are these people are able to mass produce these things for pennies on a dollar. And if we can't just go in our pocket and just spend a little extra to support our own, you know, what 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 is it? So that's that's my question to the panel. What do we do? And I'll give you guys the mic. What do we do? Hey, can I jump in there, Everett? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to jump in there, too. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to be behind you. Okay. All right. Well, you know, first, it's like, you know, this this question has been asked before. You know, what do we do as, as a people in this in this republic, right? In this republic that's systematically um, holding us back, holding us down, uh, whether we want to, the harder we work or not, right? And you mentioned the kids, right? The kids, you know, there's no disparity disparity in the in the kids until you get to when you become teenagers and you're going off to college and your parents don't have the same level of money that little Jimmy parents had to send him off to a school and support him his day to day. So, you know, college is not hard. It's the it's the it's the psychology and the living arrangements of it all. So the first thing we need to do is address this economically and not us. The problem is not for us to figure out. We don't, we're not qualified to figure out the problem. And I, and I say that, and, and let me, let me caveat what I'm saying is basically we've come together before and tried this and, and been sabotaged, right? We don't, we don't have the necessary protection of security forces to sustain uh, economic within this Republic, because historically we've seen what this Republic is capable of and how they sabotage uh, project. So as much as we want to come together, then it's not going to be allowed. So right now what's happening in this time with this virus is, is, is creating a level playing field and there's a day of reckoning that's happening and it's being forced by the universe, right? So so now we at the table, we're talking about reparations now. They're, they're, they're having studies and they're making studies saying, you know, one guy came out with 14 trillion. I've heard 40 trillion. I've heard, you know, it's not until we start digging into the the issues we have as a, as a people and what this republic has done to us so we really wouldn't know what to ask for or how to how to even address the uh the concerns and the disparities that we have in the healthcare system the housing system uh the education system i mean all these systems are are, are basically working against us and not for us and it's not until we have some level of ownership and we we basically uh take matters into our own hands uh, to 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 really start addressing, I, I put it like this: Our generation is probably not going to see uh, a real solution brought to the table uh, on this matter. This 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 was being asked during when James Baldwin was around. He he said, "How many more lives do we have to lose before it's not us that need to grow up? It is not us that need to grow up. It's the it's the other party. It's our other brothers and sisters who need to grow up in this whole." situation so how many more lives do we have to lose until we wait till they till they understand it's not on us to educate them it's, it's really not you know and 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 it's, it's like you know being a being a part of this republic being simple-minded is a great american virtue so you're in a system that that praises being you you're in a system that praises you know not wanting to ever grow up it's not it's not us it's not on us and, he, and 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 this that's respect to uh 
you know, all our brothers and sisters that come before us that came before us in the civil rights movement. Well, which was the human rights movement. So that's all I, I want to say. I didn't mean to rant, but you know, it's like, you know, it's really, it's really nothing. We can, we can really come, we can come to the table, but we're not really qualified to, to answer that. Facts. But uh, the piggyback off of what you would say, I agree with you, one hundred percent, my brother. What you just said, and the first thing they need to do is to acknowledge what they did was wrong. Once they acknowledge what they did was wrong, then we start from there. Because right now, they still haven't acknowledged what they did to us. Now, back to what Brother Alex said about, uh, uh, Brother, uh, Brother Alex said about what do we do? Let me tell you, my own, this is speaking from my perspective, okay? We need to call by our own land. Go get some land and build our own schools and teach our own kids the history of everything. And just like the brother said, said, Cedric said, we need to teach them from young and let them and teach them from the young and let them know what's going on. We don't need no, we could be our we could be our own self-policing. We don't need no police officers. We could be our own self-policing. You see what I'm saying? We go get us some land, go cut ourselves off from them and show them that we don't need them for nothing. Because guess what? We had the Black Wall Street already. They were so jealous of us with the Black Wall Street to where they had to come and burn it down. Because they were jealous of us and we were doing way better than them. And they had everything. You see what I'm saying? So I was saying, that, that's, what, that's what my whole mentality is right now. Is like, we need to lay up there, cut ourselves off from them, show them we don't need them. And take our kids, and if we can take our kids, we can show them and teach them ourselves. Because if we send back, we ain't doing nothing. Send our kids to school to to get brainwashed and teach our kids, let our kids get taught their history, which was stolen history. You see what I'm saying? And I I actually had to, I actually got into an argument with my daughter teacher one uh, last year when she came home from school and she had some homework dealing with Christopher Columbus saying. He discovered America. And I actually had to break it down to her and tell her what the truth was. And I said, if your teacher got a problem with that, you call him and tell him. I said what I said. You tell him to come and come talk to me. And I tell him myself that they're alive. You know, and I had a whole argument with the teacher about it. Because I'm sick and tired of our kids being led by the by lies. And, 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 and it's not cool because now I'm 35. I'm still trying to debunk what I was taught in school. All right, you know what I'm saying? and it's and it's crazy. All right, but I passed right. the mic. I passed the mic to brother, uh, brother, brother Peanut, uh, 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 uh brother Allen. Let me, uh, yeah, let what? me say something right quick. Um, like, uh, I agree with basically most of the stuff y'all say. You know, you know what I'm saying. But let's get real. Like, it's not you know, especially us, older, thirty. 35 40 plus come on man like we got to do some things right now to we can't first of all we know we're not gonna get it through government we're not gonna get changes through government we already know that that's been proven so no we we do it is in our power to change it like i don't i just can't go for that one it is in our power to change it because you know what Money talking, bullcrap running marathon, and we got a lot of, we got a lot, maybe not on a corporate level, but we have a lot of power financially as far as consumer. You understand what I'm saying? True. And true. You, don't get, true. you don't get Walmart, you don't get all these uh, FedEx, now they want to take their name off the, uh, they're they talking about taking their name off the naming rights and stuff. Come on, man. We have a lot of power. See, that's the thing. We have more financial power now than we ever had. And people before us who were physically attacked and bombed and everything. This is a mental slavery we are in. My question really was asked, how do we break the mental slavery? White man can't do that for us. Him saying, I'm sorry, will not do it for us. So my question was, no. how do we... How do we specifically, as a people, what do we need to do? We, I see it. They're not even part of my answer. They're not even what they, white people not even a part of my question. 
You understand? I'm talking about us. We as a people, what do we do? You know, because we have to have our own community first. We have to stabilize and mobilize in our own communities before we can integrate and get things done on an equal playing field. You understand what I'm saying? So like, like, I don't, I, like, y'all made some great points. I'm, I can't debate a lot of your points, but the mentality of the, the answers, I, 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 me right there, I can't feel, I, I'm not yeah. feeling that to the I, point I where we can't, we can't do nothing. Yeah, we, we have a lot of power. It is our problem. It ain't they problem because they don't care. They, they getting but along. They doing whatever they want to do. They not having a problem getting loans to start business and everything. So what do we, what do we do? We need liberation over education, man. I think that's what we missed with Mr. Mark, you know, and, and I'm talking about we're operating in, in this Republic. We don't have our own sovereign government. We're not at our own discretion right now. So, you know, the mentality is, you know, ownership. I mean, that's where it starts and liberation over education, you know, and what I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, we opted to have schools and names for our schools, which is cool. We can educate ourselves, but we're not free. So, you know, how do you operate in a republic that that's consistently uh, changing the rules, uh, consistently marginalizing you, consistently shooting you, consistently uh, causing trauma, consistently psychologically messing with you? I mean, we need the scientists to come in, bro. We, we honestly, man, man we're not qualified. Uh -huh. If you look back, even in the Bible, the children, as, as long as we've been free, the children of Israel was going around the mountain as many years as they was going around because of the mentality. We, 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 wow, that's it right there. That's we're in it. the same situation as they were in 300 years <laughs> out of slavery, 150 years out of slavery. You see what I'm saying? So I have two, three generations. Hello? Sorry yeah, about that. I, I don't know if you can. Uh, yeah, he cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He cut off. But, and, and that's basically, bad, that's basically what I'm saying. Like, we, we, we we got a lot of like 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 the liberation part. We have the best blueprint and the best litmus te test of how to do things from the white man. Tell you the truth, because guess what? They they bucked the system. You act like this this system wasn't in place when they came. So look, all right. If that means we go to jail or. Whatever, man, we don't, man, it's time to stop worrying about their laws when their laws are wrong and biased towards us and do what we do. True. Period. They can't stop True. us. See, they, they can set laws all day. Who cares about the laws they set? If we're not killing people, stealing, or nothing like that, who cares about their laws? You understand what I'm saying? But it, the problem is we have to raise families and everything, and we're scared and fearful of not being able to probably do that. And like the brother said, if we get land, start raising and cultivating our own food and, you know, buying our own clothing and everything. From, what, what, so what? what? All right. You can make laws all day. We, we live in an independent America. We don't follow y'all. rules. That's how they got blue and red. They used to have the wig party. Like, hey, they've been separating from ideas. Their ideas don't match. Hey, we're going to start something different. So why we as a people can't be unified and start something different? That's what I'm saying the whole time. So I, yeah. you know, that part, now you talking. See, now you see, talking. When you're talking like that, you talking. But what we can't do, you that, there's no solution when that when that's even thought of, of. When those words are used, what we can't do, that's that 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 that, that that's a recipe for failure right there because we yeah, we are so you giving up you giving up when you say yeah, you we are giving up, up right but with the points he made were very relevant now he live he, he making some real facts you know but they're facts and the truth and facts are different because the truth is consistent it doesn't change facts can change over time so yeah. at the end of the day all right they facts so that means we got a real good shot if that's all you stating is facts. Because facts can change, because we can change them facts, you know. So let's 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 get it together, man. Like that's all. That's what I'm basically saying. I got a lot of ideas how we can yeah, get. I, I agree. I, 
<laughs> I agree with I agree with you, brother. Because like I said, all we, how I say how I say we, we we cut ourselves off. See, the thing is, we need our brothers, our brothers and sisters to come together and be able to sit down in the in in, in a conversation and be able to sit down and have that that that, that meeting without 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 the humbug. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. See, we need to be able to, we need to be able to sit down and have a grown up, a grown adult, brothers and sisters, and everybody come to without some humbug. Because like I say, if we if we can we can it's possible we can we can carve out our own piece of land, grow our own crops, our own uh, schools, and then we can do we can it's possible. But the thing is is us as us as as people Got so much hatred towards women. Don't want to see the next man do good. If they can, if they can get that mentality out the way, it's no telling what we can do, bro. Right. That and that's my point. That's my point. And it's a lot of fear too, because we still got to feed our family. You know what I'm saying? We still got to do it. But 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 at something. the end of the I, day, we we got to take that sacrifice. That's what I was about to say. Because let me tell you something. It's no sir. I don't look. I I, I don't look at things as fear because. Look what happened with Hurricane Katrina. It came and destroyed and put you a whole other place. Or put you in a whole other state. Didn't know Adam or Eve, don't know nobody. But you still got up and found a way to survive those four, for 14 years that you've been out here from Katrina. See, but to so me, that, to me, fear is healthy because fear, fear really helped me to know who what I'm made of and who I really am. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's fast. all right to be fearful or something, but it, it, it's 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 cowardice when you just give in to the fear. It's all right to be fearful. It's okay. Yeah, I've been, see, a lot of people, a lot of people are comfortable. See, a lot yeah. of people got comfortable. They never, they not, they right. not, they exactly. Never know exactly. They don't know what it is to be uncomfortable. And LeBron mm -hmm. James said it. He said, "I like being. I like." He said, "I like being uncomfortable." Say, man, that means you're doing the right thing. From. That means you do. You making progress when you're uncomfortable, dude. Like you making, you making. Progress, my brother, and I guess that gumbo must be ready because uh, peanut ain't saying nothing. <laughs> now, he said, I was in the chat, he's saying he was having technical difficulties. Oh, all in right, the chat. but I was oh, yeah, he, he, my, he, off, he off the chat right now. We yeah, the only I'll let brother, I'm gonna let we brother, the only uh, uh, oh, I didn't know, brother. Shout out to original copper Indian man, yeah, yeah I was gonna shout him out too. every week, man. Yeah, I was he gonna shout him out every week, man. Yeah, he loyal. He, but he yeah, he he now, what I was just saying, though, you know, like, bro, I, I tell a lot of people all the time, man, if we could come to the table, man, and be able to have grown up conversation where we could be able to have a blueprint where we can have our own, because guess what? They're doing something to the food already, man. Yeah. So, man. if we could grow our own food, it's best we grow our own food so we can start eating healthy and start, and so if we start eating healthy, we can think better. You see what I'm saying? It took for me to move out of New Orleans, you dig, to see a better future. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's the world is bigger than your back, you know, man. And people don't understand it. Don't want people don't understand that my pet month is forever. He's back. Can you guys okay, hear me? Can I, uh, no. Nah, I can't. Nah, can anybody nah, hear me? I can hear you, ever. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm ever. back. I've been off. <laughs> I've been off for a long time because I had tech <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> And you guys did a good job of holding it together <laughs> while I was going through my technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah, you I laughing mean, because you that I had to use my phone to watch y'all. <laughs> you laughing because you're no, I ain't shit. I ain't got any no gumbo. It was I had, to use my, I had to use my smartphone to keep it going. You heard me? <laughs> I don't want to tell you. You guys did an excellent job keeping it together. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> You guys said, uh, I want brown eyed nurse on the panel. I want brown eyed nurse on the panel. And if I can get anybody else on the panel who are uh, the original copper Indian on the panel, I want you guys, uh, guys to show up. You know what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. The, um, uh, you guys were splitting game, and I love your professionalism, how you guys were able to keep it together. Fly traders, come back. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we all kept it going, and I like that that professionalism. You know something was going on. You heard me. You know I wasn't. I told, you know my big mouth. I would have been talking. Huh, sister? Right, right. Huh, I sister? Knew something was sister Purple. <laughs> you know I would have been talking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Were they edge rise yet? 
<laughs> but at the same time, though, I would love to hear from Sister Purple because we, me and Alan, been running it. Oh, yeah, let's go to I, Sister I, I would love Sister to hear. Purple, we I gonna, love to hear. Yeah, we yeah, gonna meet up. We gonna mute up. up. Speaking on my about, page, on my page, I only saw, I only saw me in five. Everybody get their mics. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let every, I'm gonna let every and Sister Purple go ahead and get their words. Like me and Alan been talking already, so we can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute my mic and let y'all do y'all. All right, appreciate it. What I wanted to say is, miss me with the we're not qualified. If our ancestors took that position, we wouldn't be here where we are right now. The Bible did the same thing. Everybody wanted Jesus to be the accession. He was supposed to be the rule. It wasn't supposed to be that, oh, he can do this and we can't. That's a cop out. We are responsible for what we do and how we impact this world. The greatest gift you can give to your ancestors is to put on your big boy britches and your big girl panties and do what needs to be done. You don't wait for permission. You do what you got to do. Even the Bible says the violent take it by force. They're not asking for permission. They're going in and doing what they got to do. Same thing with us. We have to get out of this mental enslavement and recognize we are the creators of our reality. We get to choose what happens on a daily basis in our lives. Nobody else can be held accountable for us, but us. So therefore, you support your black businesses. You actually support the black banks that already exist. There are several banks that are already black owned. There's black grocery stores, black, black wines. There's a lot of things that you could be doing to support your own community. You don't have to ask permission to go buy from a black owned business. You can walk in and do that very easily. You don't have to wait. You can buy your block. There's a lot of people right now who are buying whole blocks. There's a, a whole town available for like a million dollars. There's no reason that, that black people can't get together and purchase that town and actually have their own black town, just like there's been black town of towns, the Irish towns. Every community has had their own town where they supported one another. We don't have to be any different. We can do our own things. We can make sure our dollar is staying in our community for more than six hours. There's no reason, especially now, for our black dollar to only stay in our community for six freaking hours, that's unacceptable and it's easily taken care of. But you have to be purpose. You have to have intention in what you're doing. Intention and thought is everything in this life. Because before somebody created a nation, it started out as a thought and an intention. Use your power. Stop acting like you're a defeated people when you are not a defeated people. Your history has already proven that you're not a defeated people. So stand up like your ancestors. Your ancestors didn't lay down and take it. Don't lay down and take it. And I guess, I guess, I guess it's my turn to talk. You know, you know, yep. I gotta sit here and, and tell you guys that. Uh, once again, thank you for holding it down. I mean, you guys kept it going. You realized the guy, you know, the, the 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 channel holder was going through technical difficulties, and you held it down. This is why I love this panel. This is why this panel is the indigenous team. This is why I love calling upon you guys. You heard me? But I can sit here and tell you guys that the reason why I came up with this topic. <coughs> And um, because we are very, very much well weakened. We have been weakened for a long time. And I'm trying to overcome these things, okay? I'm trying to uh, uh, overcome some of the things that I, I have grew up on. And when I was talking about Tom and Jerry, stop it. I got my kids attacking me right now, acting crazy. Um, yeah, please elaborate I watched, on that. Please when I watched Tom and that. Jerry, 
Yeah, and, and I and, and I was trying to sit there and I think about it, which you didn't did. But I was thinking about Tom and Jerry and some days of Tom and Jerry when you saw the big woman and she was walking down the hall. Thomas! Thomas! And you didn't see her face, but you can tell it was a black woman. You know, just like Aunt Obama and all this, how they painted our black indigenous queens. And Tom and Jerry and you know, you had a uh, Buzz Bunny and you had these episodes where Alma Fudd and they were showing the, the, the black man being humiliated. The black woman being humiliated. And be, as kids, we didn't even understand. We could not interpret what was going on. We saw it was funny when we saw Buzz Bunny paint his face black. When Disney painted their faces black. But people tell me all the time, you're dwelling on the past. You're dwelling on the past. The past is the reason why we're in our circumstances right now. The past is the reason why we are hurt, hurting nation of people. And people tell me that you keep stating the past. That liberals, because I'm not liberal, they always stereotype black folks when you hurt us. Because you put us in a circle. You put us in a bubble, acting like you ain't had no suffering. Because when I think about it, when you go to trailer park, uh, trailer park, it ain't no damn different than a project. They got so, people that are suffering in the Caucasian community that are on mad drugs. It didn't take me long to move to Slidell, Louisiana. When I brought when I bought my first home, these people were on crystal meth. But the media puts the bad of the blacks on TV. The media out, outlines the bad of the black people. The so-called black people who are copper people. And this is a deep, and people tell me you can't get over it. No, I can't get over this. That they stereotype. And when you look, and we have to understand this thing, that when you look to Chicago, and when we look to New Orleans, and when we look to Philadelphia, New York, these are small sectors of the problem. America is bigger than them land things. And when we talk about what's going on in Iowa, what's going on in, in uh, North Dakota, the majority of them people are white. So who is doing the crime there? And where's the national media there? Because they only want to paint us out to be the criminals. They brought fear to their own white people. They brought fear. White people are scared of us because they brought fear. They paint us out to be the criminals. They paint us out to be the bad people. And they don't show the whole story. Right. See, they don't dissect. They don't dissect Chinese people, crimes in America. Vietnamese, crimes in America. Mexican, crimes in America. Italian, crimes in America. But they dissect black melanated people and they put us all in our own boat. I agree with you 100%, brother. You believe brother. in the Atlantic uh, slave trade, you, you, you have to understand that you are shackled. Oh, and, and I want you guys to understand, it's, it's uh, Mr. Pablo Fullboy and it's Alex on the panel, and, it, and, and it's Sister Purple on the panel. So I want to ask you, if we shackled together, we all on this ship, and we're going to talk, talk logic, 
We are all on this ship. And uh -oh. we all together on this ship. Don't you have body functions that has to happen yeah. on this ship? Yep. So what that what when you see a, a, a family member in the hospital that has been bedridden and they have feces on their body and they have urine on their body and they have to be moved over and changed over because they can't stay in that same position. So you tell it and they, and they have their diaper has to be clean on a, on a, on a daily basis. Because the, the human body has to be that. Way. So you're telling me that all of us was on this ship and we were coming from Africa, which would have took on a sailboat one month or, or more. And you're telling me that you're going to tell me that it would not cause a disease, a major disease, that it would not cause a major disease to the slave masses that was holding us down on these cartoon imageries because you can find the Titanic, you can find Confederate history, but you cannot find slave ships. Well and I don't want I don't want I I, I don't want to play with the intelligence of the world. I don't I don't want I want you to play with what what with, with the white man has taught you in school the roots and all that bullshit. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Now tell me the capacity of 300 Five hundred or more slaves on the ship. Tell me how they got here. Where well, on? Um, uh, I think you were trying to say something. Is anybody speaking? No, go ahead. He was waiting on you to respond because you were trying to say something. Appreciate it. Let's talk fast, shall we? When you were speaking about this wonderful slave ship that all of us was going to be on, let's talk about what's happening with the crew, first of all. First of all, the crew is starving. So therefore, the likelihood of them wanting to take on cargo that has to be fed and they're barely surviving themselves isn't likely. If I'm almost starving to death, do you really think I'm going to add another mouth to feed to the mix? Not to mention that you're dealing with a group of people who always enslaved the people where they work. When they showed up to any place, they enslaved the original people to that land. Now, all of a sudden, after thousands of years of this working for you, because keep in mind what Dr. Phil said, people do what works for them. If it has a payoff, it will continue to be done. This has worked for thousands of years of enslaving people. You enslave the people that you conquered. You don't go out and, and add some new people to the midst that wouldn't know how to deal with the land that you're on. You enslave the people who already know how to work that land. This has been their MO. So all of a sudden now, we're supposed to believe after thousands of years of this being their MO, one day, just whoopsie daisy, they decided to change their MO. Miss me with the BS. That isn't what happened. What was happening is they were sending you away because you might have a baby. Because you became so problematic for them. They were so terrified in their beds, they were willing to send you anywhere to get rid of you because you were that much of a threat to them. Because you weren't laying down and taking it. You weren't just being a voluntary slave. When they made agreements with you and you, they didn't keep them, you went for their throat. So miss me with this wonderful tales of the crypt story that has never been able to be validated. When I go to, I'm in what is considered the birthplace of this wonderful place, Virginia. They don't have actual slave ships in Williamsburg, Virginia. They have replicas. You mean to tell me out of all these slave ships that supposedly came over here, there's none on the bottom of, of the ocean floor? Miss me with the BS. Now I'm more inclined well, to, they sent you away. 
But financially, it makes no sense to go after a cargo that you're not even guaranteed to have come here. Because that's why some of the colonies died off. It's because they could not get the supplies from across the sea to here. But now we're supposed to believe that thousands upon thousands of people who have to eat were suddenly brought in mass numbers over here? I don't buy it. I appreciate Thanks. the time, everybody. But uh, I wanted to speak on two things right quick, and I'm going to pass the mic. Um, one is with uh, Brother Cedric said, this country is declining, is my point. The money is weak, we do, and we we don't have discretion. Now, there are a lot of truth to what this brother just said, because for one, I'm going to break something down to you guys, okay? I work at a bank, okay? They are now putting up letters, and I'm going to tell you what's going on in the world. Some people are not even paying attention to, okay? Whenever y'all go to the next gas station, you go get some gas for your car and stuff, pay attention to the, the signs that's in the door, okay? China has done away with money. There's no more cash money dealing with China. It's all credit cards over there. Now they're moving to the United States. In the bank, the Federal, the federal Reserve has a limit on coins now. In a little while, you're going to start seeing the commercials and, and the stuff saying those people who know how, I know a lot of older, uh, anybody that's older, they have those, um, where I'm from New Orleans, we used to call them the Kentwood water jug, but your grandma used to have on the side of the bed, you put all your coins in from that day or whatever. In a little while, they're going to be seeing commercials begging you to come in and go to Walmart and turn your coins and stuff they're going to pay you from. There's a coin shortage in the world. In some stores, they're asking you to pay with exact change, credit card, because there are, uh, or either you could do it with Apple Pay or Google Pay. How y'all have it? I know I got Apple Pay. So a lot of these stores, they're going to be asking you to pay with exact money because it's a coin shortage. In other words, they're trying to say they're going cashless. And that's why I say there's some truth to what the brother's saying about the money is weak. The money that we have now is not backed by anything. So it's like it's like saying, okay, here's twenty dollars. But the twenty dollars don't really mean nothing because it's nothing it's not backed by anything. Money used to be backed by gold. The money is is useless now. So that's why they're trying to turn that's why they're trying to turn everything into cashless now. When I, I, I got proof that the other day I went to the store to get gas. And there's a, a sign in the door at the gas station. Please pay with exact change or credit card due to shortage of coins. Now, how can a country that print money and all this stuff here be have a shortage of coins? You see what I'm saying? So now they're trying to make everybody go cardless. They're trying to push this this so-called chip uh, agenda on everybody now. You know, this, oh, but, you know, I want to, I want to ask. Uh, this is a question I want to ask. Um, if you could mute up, uh, Fop, Mr. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, but uh, go ahead. Um, this is something I wanted to talk to Alan Schmidt. Um, and I was thinking about something, Alan. If you can unmute your button, you can talk to me right quick. But uh, and I was sitting here and I was thinking that um, uh, and this is crazy, you know, that and 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 I sit here <laughs> as a uh, and I think about what happened in Oklahoma. Could you unmute your button, Mr. Uh, Alan Smith? Is this you? Yeah, I'm, right I'm right here. I'm right here. Um, Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah, this it's like you and I talking. It's just you and I. Um, Oklahoma gave passed a bill, and they gave more five dollar Indians half of Oklahoma, and um. People were celebrating and, and everything, and um, I had a tear in my eye, and I was hurting because they give them half of Oklahoma. Yet, yet some of the Mongolians have been fighting for years. Some of these people have been fighting very hard. Much respect for you, Native Americans, that got what you want. But America, which has been built and and the skulls that I talked to you about, you know, that were found in Brazil, all the way from South America, all the way to where we are. You can't even get Texas. 
we are the most disrespected people in America. We're the most disrespected people. And, I, and the reason why I got you in this personal conversation, because I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you, is that I had a conversation with a 68-year-old man. And that 68-year-old 68 man validated me a lot of things that I have been telling you. He said, brother, only thing I ever known they call us was Negro. And for them to degrade us, they call us Negro. He said they went, they call us color. They never called us African. And when I tell you that we got some butt licking brothers like Jeff Jackson who has done nothing but wrong for our community. Sell Al Sharpton has done nothing Sell but wrong for our community. And I want you to understand that until we start voting with the judges, putting our judges in the fold, in the lower okay. sector, and we vote at the lower sector, because you know, you and I, we lost some friends because of this. Because we said that the president is not the most important office. It's the lower sector that is the most important office. And until we start voting these congressmen, these people that are for our best interests, we're not going to be able to progress. So I want to ask you that question, my brother. What, uh, what am I saying wrong? Um, personally, I don't think you're saying nothing wrong. Like, I mean, until somebody is enlightened and start to learn more things about their history and everything, because I was just watching a brother not um, too long ago, uh, it was like the topic of his uh, site. I don't even know his name. They didn't have it on it, but the topic of his uh, yeah. discussion was Indian slavery, the unspoken history. Like how Indians were taken. It's like it's almost like slavery was in reverse. Like the Indians was taken from America and brought to Europe. Then they made their way back to America and they got brought back to Europe. You know what I'm saying? From America. You know, and how then when it came to them trying to get more <laughs> to enslave more, they used them as uh, interpreters because they knew the language and they knew the land and everything. So, you know, you have to just totally relearn everything that you learned. Like, you know, and we got to be empathetic and understanding to those people who might not know. Like, I, I argued you hands down. I thought you was crazy. Talking about we wasn't Africans, I thought you was crazy. You know how you know how we used to go back and forth with it, but you got to let people. You, you know, know, you know, and I and I go ahead, brother. And you got to let you got to let people. You know, you got to let the process play out because people who really are seekers and really want to learn, they'll get it. They might not get it. They, they might, you know, to you it might look like it's plain as day. But back then, it didn't look as plain as day to me like it does now. Like, even with the slave ship part, like, that just don't make, it's not rational to even say you could do that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you can't, you, you really can't. So, until we come into that that mindset that we have been lied to and that history is, you know, backwards and, and they, they, they try to change it to whitewash it, you know, that's when we come into that, that, that agreement because like you, you gotta, it, but it's a self, you gotta be a seeker, man. But this stuff is deep, bro. We've been, we've been brainwashed for years, bro. This, this don't happen overnight. Man, we, you know, you know, you know, we, you know, we've been seeking, you and I have been seeking for a very long time. As a matter of fact, you yelled at me. You thought I was a crazy. Yeah. I thought you was a, a, a lunatic. You know how we used to go back and forth. <laughs> much respect. I have so much respect for you. 
Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. And I, and I have so much respect for you, the fact that you humbled yourself to realize, hey, man, I want to, you know, what's wrong with being a high thinker? Mm -hmm. Why be closed mind to the things that was taught to us? Why not question things that was exactly. taught Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that's what you tell you. I'm going to go out and come back in because I'm not going to question hearing everything. Don't, don't. Yeah, go ahead. She said she's not hearing everybody, so she's going to go out and come back in. Question everything. And these are the things that I want you guys. I want but you, you guys know to I do that. You know I do that, but it was just everything that about you the Aboriginal. I didn't do that for. Question right. everything. Everything that was right. told. Right. Right, and I'm the I'm the type of person that 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 does that. But go ahead, when, brother. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't trying to cut you off, but I'm saying like when you say you have to question everything, you know, I'm the type of dude I that. I think what happened to you, but I just couldn't see it how you saw it, man. It, it was so. I think what happened so to you. Go ahead. I'm listening, brother. You, you cut off. I think what? what happened to you, my brother, is. Uh -huh. When you, well, I think what happened to you mm -hmm. is when you saw, when you heard of Aborigine, you think of Australia people. See, and, and, and that's why I don't fault you because when we think of the Aborigine, it always talks take us back to Australia. And these are the things that you know I had to be educated on. I had to sit there and think about it too, but. When I look at some of them people, I see some people in Australia that look like some people right here in, in America. No, nah, they, 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 they do. I said, they wow, do, that yeah. person looks like that person. Uh, yeah. They look more so they like us than Africa. They look more like us. They do got our like, big old nose. Yeah, they yes, look more they like, look us way African, more like us than Africa. Right. And I, I never disputed these people. These people... Yes, they've been... They, these people have been enslaved. If you go to listen to the history, I have a video that I'm going to do. They're still fighting the queen. They're still fighting mm -hmm. things that we are fighting on. They're, right. they're not even accepted. And then the on land, that's their, that was their land yeah. first. So yeah, the what I'm trying global. to tell you, the fights, the fights that they're going through is the fights that we're going through here in America. Right. Nationwide, man. It's nationwide. Yeah, it's worldwide. And people are afraid it's, it's to attack these dude. roots. They're afraid to attack these roots. And what we got to do, we can't be afraid no more. We can't be afraid. If you got white friends, there wasn't your friends at all because we're not saying anything that's racist. We're just talking facts. They were never your friend if they want to unfollow you because you're talking about your history. You're trying to learn something about you. And this is nothing wrong with Edgar because we, we we wasn't given that opportunity to know who we was. We wasn't we was pushed in. I like I said, and I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'm gonna let um uh, uh Sister Purple come on, and then I'm gonna let the five or four brother come on, and uh, and I want y'all to understand. And I'm gonna say this: us as people, we wasn't given an opportunity, a fair opportunity to know who we was. Because everything was stripping away from us. We were we hold the names of Jackson. We hold the names of others on our back. We hold the names of other names of the slave masters on our back. We got brown eyes nurse on here, so we uh, we'll give uh we we're gonna go with just the purple nine, then we're gonna go with brown eyes nurse. All right. Yeah, get it, please. Hello? We're going to yeah, mute up you, Alan. You and I are going to mute up. No, no, no. I'm not, I don't want to say that. I'm just saying. I ain't hear nobody say anything. That's why I'm just checking. I don't know if Purple is talking. How are y'all? No. Oh, fine, no. fine. Um, basically, it's important that you, you decide who you are. Nobody can decide that for you. And that's not something that should be left up to somebody outside of yourself to do. Part of the problem of why we don't know who we are is because we have allowed ourselves to be force-fed a 
a whole lie. We've been indoctrinated and we, a lot of people have, have not critically thought for themselves and they're just sucked in the whole story wholesale. So we definitely need to break ourselves out of the mental slavery that quite a few of us are in. And to really, like Dane Calloway said, don't take my word for it. Don't take anybody on this panel word for it. Research for yourself and find out who your family really was. Stop allowing the narrative to be told to you. Instead, no sure. one of the greatest gifts that Tanner gave me, he said, never put yourself in a situation where people know more about you than you. That advice is just as important. Yeah, we're going to go with the new person that came on the panel, and we're going to let that person have a chance to talk. And then we're going to go with 504, brother. And then we're going to end the panel. Yeah, because... Is that me? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, you, that's, you, that's you. Oh, okay. How are y'all? I really hate to jump in the middle. Everybody mute up. Everybody please wanna... mute up. I wanted to make sure I was on topic before I joined. But y'all sparked something um, that I always wanted to talk about. I actually have, well, let me put this out the way. I'm not racist. My dad's family, my dad is actually, my grandfather is black and white. Um, but we actually have, I live in South Carolina. We actually have the white part of our family right here with us that they never wanted anything to do with us, the dark side. And so they just recently reached out to us, I think about 10 years ago or so, maybe even less than that, um, inviting us to the family reunion. But of course, none of us went. We go, we hadn't gone yet <laughs> because we've been conflicted. I just wanted to throw that part out there. But I'm gonna, I kid you not, my dad talked so much bad things about black women growing up to the point that my, my uh, second brother went and got him a white wife. And so then they weren't pleased. He was shocked, my dad. They weren't pleased at all. But I mean, what can you do after you already put us down and, you know, all the stereotypes that people said, he backed it up. And so it ruined my brother. And he's like, um, I'm brown skinned. My other, I have, I had two brothers and one sister. My oldest brother and my sister passed away. But long story short, I'm the lightest of them. And so it's like he was always ashamed of his skin. I'm just telling you how we, of how some people think, just knowing firsthand how he did. Um, and so he would always, you could notice, you would notice he would change up his speech when he's talking to us. And then when he's talking to white people, he change, he has a whole different talk. And my oldest brother used to tell him all the time, you need to stop pretending. What is wrong with you? And so it's like he has always been ashamed of us, even men, you know, the black men. All the friends that he had in high school and college, he no, no longer speaks to. And so he actually does these things. I hate to stereotype things and categorize as white activities and black activities. Well, he hangs out more with white people doing things that white people do. And so it's just disappointing to me to, you know, to actually see my own brother to um, do things like that. And so I just, that's what sparked me to looking it's into actually, my family. It's, it's actually not. I'm sorry. It's actually not his fault. It's actually not his fault. It's the no, culture it's, that it's he not. does. Well, right. when you thought it's, about Michael Jackson, and I want you guys to understand, is, um, I want you to understand, he, in our culture, we were talking. Right, it's we were what he grew up like looking at. Him. Right, not like each other, and he, bought, you know, he bought into it, and it's just sad. But I think he's starting to see now, and so it sparked yeah. me to just look more into our background because I just, I just couldn't stand it. You know, it was heartbreaking. I mean, we treat her like family. She's family. We're not prejudiced at all, but. You know, just the initial shock of it all. And um, what made me stay on your channel, Peanut, I want to tell you in Choctaw Chief Chiefness this for a long time. When I first came on, y'all were talking about a family tree. And if I could take a picture and send it to y'all, I kid y'all not, I had just gotten a um, portrait. It's like almost six feet long, maybe four or five feet tall. You have to put it together. My um, cousin in New York had been keeping track of our family tree for generations, and he has names on it that I've never seen, never heard of. Wow. You know, and it almost, I mean, y'all had started talking about it, and I had just gotten it. So I was like, oh my God. And so I'm working on it now to feel in our parts, you know, 
to keep it going. My mom is 70. And so I also want to um, keep up with my, my dad's side of the family, even the part that, you know, we don't know. But it's just like I was just led to the right place. I'm just wanting to tell y'all I'm, I'm glad to be here. I didn't want to change the subject, but it just, you know, it sparked my my uh, feelings on what happened with my oh, brother. We, we happen to have you here. About 16 years and what, ago. And, what you, what uh, and what, you, what you don't understand is this, that I guess somebody jumped in. What you guys don't understand is this, is that we all got white in Every last one of us in America has white in our blood. Due yeah, to the yeah. rapes, everybody has white in them. Okay, some of us have the French culture. Some of us have the, Sp the Spanish culture. We all have some kind of blood or, or the Italian, okay? So but we're talking about the beginning who your people was before the rapes and before the rapes, before the origin of the rapes. And you can see, you can see yourself and you can see yourself not looking like an African. No matter how much you put your braids in your hair, when you women out here putting your braids in your hair, looking, you know, no, no, you want to be uh, Cleopatra, you want to be all these people. These, I want you to understand there's a difference between Egyptian people. Egyptian were black people. The people, they were our cousins. But if we want to talk about the origin of the world, the Most High said that we will be put in the four corners of the earth. So understand that if we want to go biblically in religion, which I don't deal with religion, we are the Hebrew Israelites. We are the gods. We are God for our chosen people. So we got to understand that we have been misused as just like the most high has been used. And, uh, you know, we have been, uh, you know, because we disrespected God. We disrespected his message. When Moses led us out of captivity, we chose to do other things. So God punished us. And he punished us with the, the 400 years of captivity. We are now abolished from that law. There's no longer an excuse about 400 years. No more. You guys are free now. But it's up to you and us people to stop killing each other and form a union together. That's the only way we're going to live in peace if we are more together than apart. Stop killing each other and stop blaming a white man and start looking at our own differences. The reason why I brought up this topic is the beginning of self-hatred. Why is the black Barbie doll bad and our our kids, our, our daughters out here in the world love the white Barbie doll? Because they don't like their skin. Self-hatred. So I'm going to close. This is the closing uh, remarks by everybody because I, I have been over the 5.30 with 5.50. I normally close at 5.30. I'm going to give 504 brother the last word and I'm going to go with Purple and I'm going to go with Alan Smith and then I'm going to go with um, our sister nurse. And that's it. And we're going to let this go and thank you all in the chat. Subscribe and press a like. Also hit the bell. Most so Hit the bell so you can get more of my content, and also subscribe. Also hit the, the hit the thumbs up. And if you want to donate to Peanut Nola Five Hundred Four, my Cash App is Peanut Nola Five Hundred Four. Anything will help with the channel. Other than that, I'm going with Brother Five Hundred Four. Can everybody hear me? That's yeah, you good. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just want to thank everybody for coming out, man. Yeah. And it was a good, a positive show today. If y'all want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brother Five Hundred Four, and also, I seen the the young lady in the chat, Brown Eye Nurse, ask the next question. I just had one to touch on before we get out of here. She said, "When she said, do y'all feel like Crump is beneficial to our people, or he just like Jesse or Al?" And 
I'm gonna answer that question quick, fast, and in a hurry, so like everybody else can speak. And I'm gonna tell you what: when 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 you do when when you ask that question, I do my research on Brother Crump, and Brother Crump is is not beneficial to us. I consider him an amber lamb chaser. And Go I'm ahead, a, brother. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, 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 I call him the reason. And the reason why I call him an Amber Lamb chaser is because he really is. He's benefiting off of, off of families that loved ones has been killed at the hands of racist cops. He has took on all these cases and not won no major case, but no yet victory. he's still getting paid. I felt the same way. That's Thank why you. I say, and, and, and brother, and the reason why I like L, uh, Jesse Jackson was because he was one of the brothers who had a hand in setting up Martin Luther King to get killed. And Al, and Al Sharpton, I damn sure don't like him because he didn't became, he admitted out his own mouth that he was the FBI informant. So now one of those guys is beneficial to us. It, they all break us down at the end of the day. So with that being said, man, okay, we're going to go on. Okay, thank you, uh, brother. And we're going on to Sister Purple. Well, what I want to say is to be mindful of what you choose to believe. Make sure that you're researching things for yourself. And yes, I agree. When you have leaders, um, the opportunity for those leaders to not be for you is tremendous. One of the beautiful things about Anonymous is that you can't pick a leader out of them. Everybody is autonomous, so therefore, you can't just, you know, pick off one person and dissipate the energy and expect it to go away. We have to be mindful about that. There's a lot of people, a lot of the agents that's been put into place that are there to dissipate the energy and to keep you from progressing forward. We have to take things into our own hands. Stop waiting for people to do things for us that we should be doing for ourselves. Like Bo of the fifth column said, he's a white man that um, trained um, the police. And he was saying that he, the difference between a black community he went into and the white community that he went into is in the white community, they were waiting for stuff to be done for them. They were relying on the government. When he went to the black community, the people there when they saw an issue after the storm, they took care of it. They didn't wait for the government to come take care of it. We have to have that mindset at all times because we have to understand the current government in the state that it is right now was never intended for us. They took our system of government and they have used it against us. So therefore, we have to be mindful and make sure we're doing what we have to do to protect ourselves, and not just to protect ourselves, but the generations that come behind us. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brother Alan Smith, you're next. And then we have the last caller. All right. Uh, I, I, it's been a pleasure being on here with you guys, as usual. Uh, I've learned a lot of things today. I gave, gave some input. And um, <laughs> really, <laughs> I really I learned some stuff today. I always learn some stuff, but it, it's I, I'm, I love it. I love it. I love uh, how it's getting better and better. You know, people are able to give their two cents and what, you know, what's going on, how they feeling and everything. And uh, I just appreciate Peanut for um for doing this, and my uh, and my queen also said, Peanut, you need to get people, uh, let people know, you know, a video on, you know, how what what gave you the revelation, or what gave you the motivation, and when did you find out this was your purpose to to do this for the people? You know what I'm saying? So you really need to uh, really get, you know, be a little bit transparent with us okay. and let us know. What really led you to do it, and not and not so much now. Like, you know, give yourself this, give yourself an ample amount of time to really, so people can really know you. Like, really know 
what really caused you to do it. And we can hear from your words, you know, and and from that, because like I've seen so much growth. OK, um, you. you know, I've seen the growth in you, man. So at the end of the day, that's all I had to so say. So one of the reasons what. Go ahead, I'm listening. Respond to you. Uh -huh. okay. You want me? Yeah, go ahead. I'm listening. You said what gave me, okay, it gave me the purpose and of, of hardness and doing what I'm doing is when my mother died, she was dying. She was dying last year. Okay. And then I started getting, um, actually, I had some, you know, relatives that were telling me things. And I had people telling me a lot of, uh, you know, about my background. But my mother told me a long time ago that we had Indian in our bloodline. And I just, and I used to like blow it off. And I blew it off for so long. And then I had followed, I followed Dan Calloway and I followed a lot of other uh, Native Americans. Mm. And I also followed, um, I also followed my brother with the Mardi Gras Indians. My brother, my brother is a Mardi Gras Indian. He used to tell me all the time, man. Look, we are we are the indigenous people. So I would I said, man, you a fool, you a fool, you crazy, you know what I'm saying? He said, look, man, you a fool. Until I started doing more research, and I start understanding more, and then people in my family start telling me, and I used to laugh at them, and now I'm sitting up here doing this, okay? <laughs> so the more and more I start doing more research. More and more, I start learning more about who I was and, and loving it. Loving the fact that I didn't feel like I was an African, just an African-American. Understanding that I'm more than just what the, with, with the, you know, the school system have told me. Because I thought I, I learned being an African-American from the school system. Not from my parents. Not from people in my family. I was told in school that I was an African-American. When you write down on certain things, you have to write down who you are. You was really not given a choice on who you was. It was always pushed on us. The Black National Anthem, Left Every Voice and Sing. A lot of things, Amazing Grace, the Negro Spirituals was put in our mind. And we were always taught that we were slaves. So I had to believe that we were more than a slave. I had to believe that my people were greater than just being enslaved. My people were, 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 were adventurous people. So we can't just sit there and just, you know, when you live a life of thinking the greatest thing about your history is slavery. That's crazy. So God has talked to me. He has inspired me. And it starts with God and, and, our, and patience and time. So I'm going to go with the last Last caller. Is that me? I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> um, I guess I could say this, like you all no, have you said before. <laughs> but like y'all said before, um, I just think we should all just, you know, always look up things for yourself, learn for yourself, and it's great, always great to learn from other people. I enjoyed, you know, talking to y'all. But what scares me, and I remember. I started thinking this maybe around the age of 12, how people always say, you know, history repeats itself. So I'm like, if history repeats itself, does that mean slavery is coming back and all this, other, you know how child, children think all this other stuff is coming back. So it makes me look at all these gestures of people trying to, now that everybody's trying to claim Black Lives Matter, you know, and got all these companies trying to uh, change things just because it's in the spotlight. Like everybody's trying to take a, you know, advantage of the opportunity. I don't feel like it's sincere. Just like the NFL now is, you know, they start singing a new tune and all kinds of things. So just be careful to uh, look at the signs. We don't want to go back into segregation because now they're trying to say they're going to sing the Black National Anthem and the, you know, the National Anthem. Why do we have to have two when we know, of course, the, the regular National Anthem, not the Black one, was originally, you know, a racist song. And they just left out the other verses. And gave us the good verse so we could all sing it. And so my thing is, why do we have to have a black this and a white that? And, you know, if we're all supposed to be one nation under God. And so it's all just smoke and mirrors to me. I, do, I just sit back and watch and try to stay alert and, you know, 
and talk with good people like y'all. And that's all I had to say. Not really anything. I didn't want to come in at the end of the conversation. I'm definitely going to go back at the beginning and listen. Um, but like I said, it's always a pleasure talking to y'all. And I appreciate you, Peanut, for putting the channel together. For us to come together and learn together. I'm done. Okay, um... We, I want you guys to put up all the arrows and the ones in the chat. I'm about to end this. This is it. And we're going to leave off on this song. Um, it is what it is. You know, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. So it is what it is. So we're going we're gonna to see what's happening. I'm going to play this song. I want you guys to put it up in the chat. And we're going to get out of here. Let me see. I thought I was still connected. So let me get, let me get this done. And I want everybody to subscribe to everybody. Those who you met today, subscribe to their channel. It's not just about my channel. Build everybody's channel up. Subscribe and press a like. Remember my cash app is Peanut Nola 504. If you want to help my channel, I will be very appreciative if you want to help my channel. So I'm about to I'm about to crank this up and give me one second. So we can get Nola's finance in the house.